what is the definition of a tiny house, a patio home, a condo, a single family home? You're going to be surprised when you hear the answers to these questions. Stick around. That's what we're going to talk about today on Q&A Sunday. Hey everyone, I'm Rich Dallas, Berkshire Hathaway, the Dallas Fincham team, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about the definition of what those homes and those home types mean, because it came up in a question. I said, hey, this is a patio home, and the buyer was unclear because our definitions of patio home differed, and the reason why it differed is based on region, it can have a wide variety of meanings to some people. A patio home in Florida might not necessarily be the same thing that we call a patio home here in Pennsylvania. Now, the one thing is we're gonna get the patio home out of the way real quick. Patio home does not mean it has to have a patio. <laughs> and that's a kind of funny thing when I was doing my research, but what typically a patio home is, it is a one story or a story and a half Typically, it has a shared wall with one other home. The exterior maintenance is done by an HOA and it is insured like a regular house. So the definition of that for our area and why it differed in Florida is because in Florida, a patio home typically isn't a shared wall, um, at least in this other person's definition. Now, this is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag and I, I have a whole sheet of what we're going to talk about, but the funny thing is all the research that I did basically said these terms are just real estate terms and they don't really necessarily have a complete definition that is like hard and true and this is always the case. Um, so that's a little bit of uh, the fun part of this whole series that we're going to talk about right now. Now, let's dive in. That was a patio home. Let's dive into the next one, a townhouse. A townhouse is typically two stories or more. It also has a shared wall or more than one shared wall. It's insured like a regular home as well. And usually it's kind of set up like a row home. If you've ever seen like the old, uh, you know, houses in New York City that are just all row homes, that is now what you see typically here in our market as a townhouse. Townhouses can have, you know, uh, different meanings to different people too because uh, there are townhouses that have first floor masters and some people will then definitely de define them as a patio home because it has the first floor master, two bedrooms upstairs, or it has no bedrooms upstairs, but it yet it's deeded as a townhouse. So it's just a little bit different. All right, now let's talk about condos. Condos are typically in a larger building. They have shared walls all the way around. They don't own any, like the homeowner does not own any of the exterior land. So you don't have to insure the entire structure. You only have to insure your unit. Uh, HOA fees are typically higher because you're, you have hallways to take care of. A lot of times garbage is included in that. Sometimes your utilities can be included in that HOA. You're obviously going to have to insure the outside of the building for the HOA. So that's why your HOA condo fees are gonna be a little bit higher. So you only own the unit uh, that you're in. You don't own any of the common areas. Now let's jump into a single family home. So single family home, that's what we hear a lot about. That is a freestanding home. It is typically all the responsibility of the exterior maintenance is on the, home, the homeowner and uh, it can have an HOA. So sometimes an HOA will cut your grass. Sometimes an HOA will do uh, little things like that. But typically your single family home is a standalone home and you're responsible for everything. Um, now a multifamily, what is a multifamily? That is a duplex or more. So a duplex, a triplex, a fourplex, a 20plex, it can go up to uh, any number you want. Um, and that is what a multifamily home is. Uh, now a co-op, that's a little bit different than every other type of ownership because you're not really buying. Now co-op, what does that stand for? Sorry, that is a housing cooperative. Now you're, what makes it different is you're actually buying shares of the company that owns the building. So you own a little bit of the hallway, you own a little bit of the 
parking lot, you own a little bit of everything about the building. Everything is voted on. You have to apply to even be accepted into the co-op building. Um, so it's a very, very uh, strict process. Um, and then you have to have group approval for everything. So everybody gets a vote on just about everything that is going on in a co-op. Now, the last one we're gonna talk about, a tiny house. What's the definition of a tiny house? Again, the definitions were kind of loosely based off of, uh, you know, the research that I was able to find, but in everything I could find, a tiny house is anything 400 square feet or less. It does not have to be on a trailer. It does not have to be mobile. It does not have to be on a structure. Um, although those are all different types of tiny houses, but a tiny house was considered anything from 75 square feet up to 400 square feet. Now, I couldn't imagine uh, someone living in 7,500 square feet, uh, and uh, it, especially if they had more than themselves. Uh, but that is the definition of a tiny house. Uh, and so I hope this was a little bit of fun, helpful information about the definitions of the different types of homes we have uh, here in our market. If you have any questions that you want to see on a future episode, reach out to me, reach out to someone on the team. My number is 412-965-6387. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. Take care.